Hello, welcome back to my channel, Theater From My View. I am Amanda Washington. Once again, we have the playwright Christian Cooper here with us to talk to us about his trilogy, which has two working titles, the Black Trilogy and the Millennial Trilogy. So Christian, tell us more about what this trilogy is. Sure. Uh, first of all, hi, Amanda. Happy to be back. Um, so this, th this trilogy is a series of three plays Obviously, it's a trilogy. Three plays, three separate stories. They are all subtly interconnected. They each explore similar themes. Now, the main theme that, you know, like anybody hopefully can pick out, you know, like the main theme, first grade test, you'll see is mental health. Mm -hmm. So that is the main theme that ties these three plays together. Uh, specifically, each play explores a different stage in dealing with mental health. So the, the part one of the trilogy, which is called An Empty Space, which, Amanda, you had uh, the pleasure yeah. of directing when we were in grad school together. Mm -hmm. An Empty Space is about a character right after they have unfortunately committed suicide. Uh, part two of the trilogy, The Dive, which is the play we're talking about today, uh, is about a character who is about to commit suicide. Um, and he's kind of dealing with the, uh, the will he won't he of, of that story. Um, and then part three of the trilogy, which I am currently outlining and getting ready to write, is no suicide mentioned. It's literally just the day-to-day, -day, the monotony of what it's like to deal with mental health issues every single day. So that's the main theme that ties these three plays together. Um, however, they also explore uh, themes like friendship. Friendship is a big theme. Um, growing up, dealing with the transition of childhood to adulthood, existential dread, uh, taking risks uh, is a big theme. And also the essentially what is what i see is the millennial plight and that's a terrible word for it essentially it's you we're seeing in the millennial generation there are more people in my generation and your generation dealing with issues of mental illness and my theory as to why that is for one thing we are the first generation with a shorter life expectancy than the previous generation. Our generation is leaving college and heading into adulthood with copious amounts of student debt. You know, our, our grandparents, our parents tell us all the time, why don't you just get a job, work full time over the summer and use that money to pay for school? That's what we did. Well, sure, because when you did it, it was actually possible. It's not possible for us the minimum wage has not risen in over a decade. Uh, meanwhile, inflation has. Uh, prices of rent, uh, the, the cost of living has. So you see a lot of people in our generation working two jobs just to, make end, just to barely make ends meet, to live paycheck to paycheck. And it's harder for us to pursue our dreams because we spend most of our time working or we're, we're caught in a rut yeah essentially yeah. we mm -hmm. we're, and and all three plays kind of explore that we have characters talking about you know we go to work we work our asses off we come home too tired to do anything for pleasure except you know just play video games and go to sleep so it's hard for us to find the motivation to actually pursue what we want to do with our lives not only that growing up uh, I know I experienced this. I don't want to assume you experienced this, but I know that I experienced this, um, and I know a lot of my friends experienced this as well. Uh, we were told that if we worked hard, if we applied ourselves, if we committed ourselves, we could do anything we wanted to. There was nothing under the sun, that there was no rock that we couldn't unturn, essentially. Um, I'm terrible with on the spot metaphors. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, but it's, yeah, essentially if we, if we worked hard, if we applied ourselves, we could do anything we wanted. And we're slowly discovering as we transition into adulthood, 
that that really isn't the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the shows, the trilogy centers around our experience living in this world, living in this time. So talk to us more specifically about the dive, because like you said, I had the opportunity to direct an empty space, which was lovely. And now I've read the dive. So can you tell us a little bit more specifically about which one or what that one is about? Sure. So the dive uh, centers around two friends and essentially one of them, Bill, gets a text from uh, his friends, Ken. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, Ken is his friend from high school. Um, they haven't spoken to each other in a long time. They were high school friends and then they kind of drifted apart after high school, as you do with high school friends. Um, but he gets a text from his friend, Ken, saying, I'm about to commit suicide. So he calls him up and he essentially says, you know, dude, what the hell? And I promise I wrote it better than that. From there, you have this discussion among the two of them. Now, Bill tells Ken, I, I'm not going to try to stop you. It's your life. You can do what you want with it. All I want is to have one last conversation with you uh, so that I can say goodbye, essentially, to, to give me closure or whatever. Um, and from there, you have this conversation between two friends, uh, between two old friends, that have known each other for a long time. And in the background, you have this weight that it's their, that it might be their last conversation because one of them is about to take their own life. Mm -hmm. And over the course of that, you've, you, we have these flashbacks, these memories, as I, I call it in the script, you see how their friendship progressed from the point they first met in high school um, and how their friendship kind of evolved over time how they drifted apart, and where life took these two characters. Mm -hmm. So what's the next step then? You've written it out. Uh, a couple of people have read it. I think you, um, maybe you didn't mention it, but I do know this, that it's had a reading. What's the next step for the dive, but then also what's the next step for this trilogy entirely? Sure. So right now uh, with the dive, I'm kind of in that uh, in between phase that I mentioned last time where I've, I've done all the revisions to it that, that I can without getting like an outside perspective. And I've had people like you and, and, and other friends take a look at it and give me some feedback. Um, but I've, I've revised it as much as I could. Um, and believe me, I'm very particular. I'm very perfectionist and monotonous with my revisions. But really, I'm at this point where I really don't know what else I can do with it without um, getting outside feedback or literally putting it through a rehearsal process mm -hmm. um, or a workshop phase to see what works and what doesn't work on stage. Um, so right now, what I'm doing is I'm submitting it to a bunch of playwriting competitions. I think I've submitted it to three so far. Um, and I'll probably submit it to another one soon. Um, and, you know, just seeing if anyone is interested in it, uh, seeing, um, you know, if maybe I can win some money, maybe uh, if a theater wants to produce it, and just, you know, see what happens. Uh, by the end of the year, I do want to have another reading of it. Um, I've, I've had a, a reading of it um, for, for an earlier draft with a couple friends from grad school. And I want to be clear, when I say reading, I don't mean staged reading with an audience. I mean a closed reading uh, with a couple friends of mine where essentially it's just us. Uh, I give them each a copy of the script. I say, you read for this character, you read for this character. And we read the play um, just so I can hear it spoken out loud. Because it's one thing to write a line and you hear it in your head. Mm -hmm. It's another thing entirely to hear people say those words out loud. Yeah. So we have the reading. I listen to it. I listen to how these lines sound when they're spoken as actual dialogue. I take notes um, on like what's working and what doesn't work. So I did that uh, a couple months ago with, an, with a much earlier draft. Uh, it's gone through copious amounts of rewrites since then. By the end of the year, I want to have another reading of it. Um, 
and take some more notes. With the trilogy as a whole, because I'm in that kind of in-between phase, um, I think I'm going to start working on part three of the trilogy, which I have already started outlining. Um, I think I'll probably start writing the actual script um, this week or next week. Ooh, sounds exciting. Sounds so exciting. Yeah. Well, Christian, thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to see what the third one entails, and I can't wait for the world to see the rest of the trilogy as well. All right. Bye. Thank you, Amanda.